What's up guys, so you just got done unboxing your brand new iPad Pro. You already are done setting it up, syncing it with your iCloud account and all that good stuff. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my favorite features, settings, and some things you need to first do, especially after setting up your all new iPad Pro. So of course, I'll be sure to include timestamps in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's begin. Now, in case you just bought your iPad and you want to verify if you did buy this brand new, in case you bought it open box, first thing I like to personally do is always go into the settings and tap onto battery. In the battery tab, go down and look for battery health. If you bought it brand new, you'll see the battery capacity. It should be at 100% with zero cycles. So our iPad has zero cycle, so we are good. Next thing I like to always do is go into the display setting and display and brightness. From here, decide if you want dark mode or light mode. This is all personal preference. I kind of do prefer dark mode, but right underneath where it says text size, this is where you adjust the text size to your own personal preference and find a sweet spot for you. For me, default you typically works perfectly fine, but you can also bolden the text as well if you decide to. Now, for whatever said reason, someone steals my iPad, they turn it off, I will still like the ability to actually be able to track this like an AirTag. Because the next setting I recommend checking out can be located actually by tapping on your profile picture right above here. When you click on this page, go into the Find My app, and then tap on the Find My iPad. Make sure not only that it's turned on, but where it says Find My Network, make sure this is also enabled as it will constantly send the location of your iPad even when it's turned off, just like an AirTag. These have that ability, but it will only work if you have this enabled. So if a thief would get my iPad and will turn it off, I can still track this device. Now exiting out here, the next thing is gestures. There's a lot of amazing gestures on the iPad. You see a simple long hold from the center to top will allow you to enter App Switcher. If you have an app that's acting funny, you could just force close an app just like so and reopen it and it will reboot the app from scratch. And then to access your control center, a top corner down like this will bring that down. Your notification will be on the opposite side. You can also app activate App Switcher by doing this in this little corner over here. And to take a screenshot, hit the power button and volume up and we'll capture a screenshot and you could dismiss it like so. And when it comes to finger shortcuts, you see in the notes app, if you like to copy something with three fingers, instead of selecting copy, you can do this and then do this and it'll paste. So I'm gonna do that again. So this to paste and then this to copy. Three fingers, pinch in, copy, spread out, paste. And then you use four fingers as an example and you do like a little swipe movement. You can switch between previously open apps. You can also long hold the little bottom bar over here to swipe. And then back in the text, three fingers, swipe right or forward will allow you to undo or redo. And then when you have the keyboard on the bottom right here, if you select this bottom portion, you could hide it. But if you like to minimize this keyboard, you can always do like a little pinch with your two fingers like so, and it will minimize the keyboard. So you have a floating keyboard instead. And to reverse back, you can tap on the dots and enter full or hide it completely. And then when it comes to multitasking tools, you always have the ability to click and drag items. By simply long holding, you can select as many items as you want. And you can literally hop in between many different apps down here and click on it. And then just make sure the cursor is correct and you can just drop it. And you can move files just like so. Now creating windows is now a feature that's available on the iPad. You see on the very bottom corner over here, if you do this, you can minimize that window, which then will allow you to open up additional windows you can rearrange them like so. And if you select on the app that you're using to operate with this little corner, just like a MacBook, you can minimize it, exit, or full screen. But when you're in this type of view mode, if you notice on top, you have the ability to bring down a little slide menu over here for your file, edit, format, view, windows, and it varies on the general apps that you're using. So you always have that cool window Mac experience right above here now. And in case it's not working for you, you need to go into your settings as you may need to enable this and go into multitask right here, multitask and gestures, and just make sure you have windows app selected. But if you're familiar with stage manager, you can also enable it here or full screen app view. And they give you little menu previews of what they do on the side over here. But the best one in my opinion is windows app. Next thing I like to show you is the control center. 
The primary control center icons you should probably keep is the ability to re screen record your screen, low power mode. But if you'd like to see the complete list, just long hold on control center, add control. You can see the complete list right down here. You have everything from like text size control if you'd like to control it on the go. It's right here. Control your accessibilities. Very powerful stuff. I recommend spending time here at least. But when it comes down to the home screen of your apps, you can now long hold, of course, to enter wiggle mode. And you can hover over an app like so to create custom folders. You can also name it to whatever you like to name that custom folder. But if you tap these dots icon, if you like to hide some of these apps, like entire libraries, you can always uncheck it. And then now we only have two. And if just simply long hold, tap here, you can re-enable it. So you re-enable those hidden apps. Then when it comes to moving multiple apps at once, again, you can always just move one app and just keep selecting them and you'll see the number count right here and you can move to the next page and just release and they'll automatically be added like so. Another way you can hide apps is by physically long holding on an app and select remove app, but just select remove from home screen. You see, we didn't delete the app. Now we just have to manually search it up and it'll appear right there. But if you like to include some apps on the hidden album, well, all you need to do is just long hold on the app and select require face ID. From here, you can decide to leave the app, but just require face ID to use it or hide it and require face ID as well. And then just scan face ID. And now it will tell us that our app will still be here. It just now will be located in that hidden album art that I was showing you earlier. And to access it, just tap on it, unlock with face ID, and you'll be able to see it right here. Then to create widgets, just simply long hold, tap edit. You could add widgets right in this corner. But a faster method if I discovered to add widgets would be just long hold on the app. You can select this bottom icon over here and we'll turn these apps that do support widgets into widgets. I find this to be a little bit faster than entering the widget page and you could just select the app and just make a widget right then and there. To tell if an app supports widgets by just simply long holding, you'll see icons on the bottom. Additionally, if you have the Apple Pencil, if you do a swipe from the bottom like so, this will enable notes. So you can quickly take notes and the opposite side will take a screenshot. And if you lock your screen and you tap anywhere on the display, this will also quickly take you to your notes app. Now using an iPad as a secondary screen is absolutely amazing. And thanks to Sidecard and Universal Control with a Mac, you can use your iPad as a MacBook separate display or an extension. You just go on your Mac Control Center and just select screen mirroring and select the iPad and it works immediately. Now the USB-C port on the iPad Pro is extremely powerful as you can plug in an external hard drive to it transfer files and it works extremely well. You can also use your iPad to charge other devices. And then when it comes to scanning documents, the native Apple file app by long holding, you have the ability to scan documents right here. It also uses AI to eliminate any background shadow. So it comes out looking as if you just scanned it on a printer. And then if you use Face ID or you like to include your spouse who also have access to your iPad, I always like to go into the settings and go into security and passcode right here, Face ID and passcode, enter a credential and go down and set up an alternative appearance. This could be your spouse or yourself wearing like a different glasses or a mask or something like that. You could just run Face ID again to scan that additional face. This way other people or different looks that you may find yourself wearing can still be able to access your iPad. And then lastly, if your iPad is acting funny, again, volume up, volume down, and long hold these two buttons will take you to your power off screen. If you're not seeing the power off screen, just continue holding the power button as well as the volume down button until you see the Apple logo reboot and it will do a soft reboot in case your iPad was just frozen or unresponsive. But there you guys have it. Those are a handful of tips and tricks, hidden features, and first things you need to do after receiving your and setting up your brand new iPad Pro. But now if you like to watch more or you like to see some new interesting technology hardware that's now available in the consumer market, check out this video over there where I review the all new Meta Ray-Ban Display Smart Glasses. These are the ones with the built-in display. They're super interesting. Highly recommend checking that out, that video out, because um, the technology that those things bring are just it's just incredible. It's basically like having a smartphone on your face, but only you can see the screen, the wearer.
It's pretty interesting. Check out that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.